All right, so I'm not going to take a lot of time uh, because I know we already had three amazing talks and Zach, Brooke, and I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the first speaker. Uh, Russ, just really tough acts to follow. So I'm going to uh, probably speed through some of these slides. And we have quite a few folks in the room, not only from the product team, but from the engineering team, the field team. If you have questions, please come find us after the formal talk. And also for this one, I think it's okay to raise uh, hands and just ask for questions and uh, clarifications because really this is an update on us as a company on our product. So if there's anything you are, have been curious about and I'm talking about it tangentially, just raise your hand and ask. All right, so I'm gonna cover um, in a different order. I'm actually gonna start with core updates, the core database, then I'll talk about integrations, ecosystem integrations, and I'll, I'll actually finish with cloud and yeah, let's make questions more interactive. All right, so we work on a lot of things in the core database. I joined the company in the beginning of 2022, and there was a bunch of things that were on the roadmap. And by the way, our roadmap is an open source. If you go to our GitHub repo right now, uh, a 2023 roadmap issue is pinned, but an, exist, uh, 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 an analogous feature, uh, sorry, issue exists for 2022. And you can see just from the number of green check marks that pretty much everything on that issue that we really wanted to, to start uh, is either completed or in progress, right? So lots and lots of velocity on that team. And as I mentioned for 2023, this is actually the issue. You can go there, you can see an even bigger list um, of things that we're working on. And that's because we actually doubled the size of our core team since ClickHouse Inc. has started. And we're gonna continue to grow. We're honestly only limited by the number of amazing technologies that we can hire. One of them is actually in the room. We have Natasha, who will be joining our team very soon. Very excited. Yes, thank you. So yeah, yeah. I mean, lots and lots of things that we're working on a core team. I'm gonna try to summarize this for you into themes because again, this is more of like, like a technology backlog uh, organized by an area of development. But for me, I'm interested to know as a user, right? What are we working on that matters to me? And first of all, and you heard this through the talks, we obsess about ease of data onboarding. Um, so one thing that our users struggle with, especially coming from Postgres, is that you can write and you should write actually pretty frequently into a transactional data store. Not so much into an, an, uh, a data store like ClickHouse that is analytical in nature. You really should be batching your writes. But who knows that? Like who knows that like it's in a docs, but who reads the docs, right? So. There is a feature now in ClickHouse called asynchronous inserts. When you turn this on, we actually batch the writes for you. There are settings, there are ways to optimize it. That's really useful. Now you don't have to worry, tell every client, you know, hey, you got to batch your writes. We will do this for you. Um, and we actually recently expanded this uh, by adding additional duplication features. So it is has been part of our engine for quite some time. It is production ready. We use it in cloud. Uh, we highly recommend you turn it on. Um, and give us feedback. If there's something there that we needs to be improved, let us know. So that's an example of something that we've worked on over the past year that we're really excited about. Another thing we're excited about is data lakes integration. Now, ClickHouse has an internal store, um, mainly the family of merge tree engines that are very efficient at columnar storage. But not all data necessarily exists inside ClickHouse. And one thing that ClickHouse has is this concept of an integration engines where you can query data not only from its internal store, but from external stores, be that S3, be that actually even another database. And so in this space recently, more and more formats, actually additional layers of kind of like how you structure data in the S3 emerged. You probably have heard of them, Iceberg, Delta Lake, Hootie. Um, and until recently, those formats were not supported in ClickHouse. You could query Parquet and many, many formats, but not these. This has changed over the past few months. And actually many of these were community contributions. So clearly there's interest in combining ClickHouse data with data that's, you know, basically in data lakes. And, you know, sometimes it's ad hoc query, sometimes it's actually a way to kind of quickly experiment before you import data into ClickHouse. Um, I'm happy to say that in addition to these formats being present, we also continue to improve Parquet. In fact, today's uh, release call, uh, 24.4 release, went out today talked about both of these in detail. We actually spent a lot of time improving some of these community integrations. And for Parquet in particular, we 100, uh, 100x improved uh, some of the reading performance. And partially because, you know, in the past, just we haven't focused on it as much. Recently, this use case has become more prominent. We listen to our community and we 
improve things based on kind of where the interest comes from. So really interesting um, for us, again, uh, we try to be a good ecosystem player. We know that ClickHouse does not exist in isolation in the data space. We're part of a bigger stack, so we invest in it. Finally, semi-structured data. Um, I think Jason was mentioned. Uh, Jason is well supported in ClickHouse, but right now you have to basically parse uh, JSON data and store it as structured columns. Um, we have an experimental JSON object type that is very popular, and a lot of users want us to get it to production ready. We hear about it all the time. It is not yet. Um, what we learned during the, the kind of the experimental phase is that we actually need to approach the problem in a slightly different way. And so there is a bigger re-architecture that's happening on the team. It's not going to happen overnight, but we do hope to get it to production ready this calendar year. So this is just like my top three on data onboarding. Um, this is not the only thing, just like what I've picked to talk about. The next category is more flexible analytics. So you have your data. Hopefully it wasn't that hard to get it in uh, and keep it synchronized. What about analysis? And one thing that ClickHouse doesn't have today compared to kind of the more mature, uh, like even transactional databases like Postgres and MySQL is a concept of a cost-based optimizer. This matters less if you're a developer and you can really optimize your queries like inside your application. But this does matter for ad hoc analytics where an analyst constructs a SQL query. An analyst is not gonna always know to write a query in a very optimized way, to always put you know, a certain size table on the left versus the right. And so their join, for instance, could be very inefficient depending on how they write it in ClickHouse today. With this analyzer project, we're gonna be able to uh, analyze the SQL syntax really fast and then actually optimize, for instance, these joins or certain types of aggregations for which there are settings today that you have to know about on the fly. So that's really exciting. It's really gonna help um, not only internal analysts, but even developers for the first time learning ClickHouse. They'll be able to just write queries. They'll be faster uh, and more performant without knowing some of the specifics that you have to know today. So I'm really excited about it. This has been a focus. There's a, a, a sub team that's working on it. started as a, actually a one person project. Uh, and now uh, there's probably six people involved in getting this over the line and delivered. Um, this last column, I think, is actually related to what a gentleman uh, up in the last row was asking about. So indexing and search, and especially kind of vector search, uh, you know, a hot area. Uh, first of all, I will say that um, we recently added inverted indices, again, in experimental um, phase. Um, that one is less sort of like, you know, controversial or interesting. Uh, it's helpful, right, if you have... Uh, for instance, full text search, it makes sense to index that in an inverted in index, and it helps you, for instance, with that kind of search. Vector search is in, uh, in uh, an emerging space where ClickHouse over the years has actually accumulated many functions that are really well positioned to help with vector search. And in fact, some embedded uh, embeddings data stores are just like a thin layer on top of ClickHouse. So certainly we have interest from our users and the community basically to kind of have a perspective, a point of view of how do we help with uh, AI research? How can we help with uh, storing and searching embeddings? And if you're interested in this topic, we have Kelly Tool in the room. Uh, Kelly, if you could raise your hand. She's uh, quite an expert in the space and is recently joined the ClickHouse team. And one of the things that she'll be focusing on is exploring this use case. So she can tell you a lot more about it. Uh, we're excited and there'll be more kind of reference architectures being published on this, hopefully within the month. Okay, um, data management. So lightweight deletes were mentioned. Yes, uh, folks uh, have been pretty excited about the fact that we recently added support uh, to make deletes. Um, you know, it was possible today, uh, you know, it was possible before to, to delete data in ClickHouse, but it was a fairly um, heavy operation. Uh, it required an immediate merge, which meant that you had impact, performance impact to your cluster immediately. Um, with lightweight deletes, uh, we do something to what was discussed uh, earlier with Postgres. We actually just mark records for deletion, and the compaction happens in the background. You don't have to schedule it, right? It happens in the background, uh, you know, during kind of a regular merge process, which is a much more kind of lightweight approach to doing deletes. So this is now production ready in uh, the March release. And so we're pretty excited about it. Uh, this helps certainly with um, compliance around, for instance, GDPR and other reasons you might want to delete data from an analytical data store. Lightweight updates is next. So why would you want to update data in an analytical store? 
Well, you may have a use case where most of your data is append only, but some data does update. We actually just heard such a, about such a use case, right? Cost data, it comes in, you know, and you need to update it. There are existing approaches to dealing with it, right? Versioning is one approach. You absolutely don't have to update if you don't need to, but sometimes it's reasonable. You may have, you know, a reference table that you do lookups against that you do want to update. So lightweight updates are coming. Uh, they're going to work similarly to deletes by having basically patches um, that we sort of keep um, and uh, reference during queries that eventually we re reconcile in the background. So kind of an interesting use case for us. Uh, again, the interest in this, I think, underscores that there's just an, like an increasing number of analytical use cases and broad set of use cases where you know, maybe not everybody needs it, but some folks really need it. And if they do, it's important to get it right. Um, a few other things here, transactions. This has been actually in experimental state for a while. Um, we are going to come back to this and look at it this year. Part of the reason it hasn't moved forward is the focus on uh, analyzer in the previous slide. That's taking uh, priority right now. But we'll come back to it. The use case here is not necessarily um, to compete, again, with role-oriented databases, but for instance, to help um, make um, you know, schema updates consistent, right? And kind of like have like a transaction you know, between certain types of statements that you may need to execute uh, in ClickHouse. Or for instance, if you have an insert that needs to update multiple tables, making sure that happens consistently uh, at the same time. Um, finally, last but not least, query cache, uh, again, was recently added in experimental, still very experimental, but we're hoping to get it to production ready in this April release. It didn't happen. I think it's going to take a lot more work. Um, again, this was a com community co contribution. We're happy that we have it, but a lot more work on our team will need to happen to get it um, to production ready state for everyone. All right. Integrations. I mentioned that we, uh, you know, we try to be a good ecosystem player. Um, by being an open source project uh, for quite some time now, we're very lucky to have a really active community of open source contributors that have added us to a number of technologies out there. We now also have an integrations team that kind of pulls all of this together. We have, quote unquote, adopted some community integrations. And for others, we partner or we support our community members. And this is just um, a few examples on this list of available and kind of recently added integrations. There's actually a 75 plus list of integrations uh, at the link here. And uh, probably this number is actually outdated. So anybody in the community that knows of an integration with ClickHouse or has created one can just add that to the list. Um, and you see everything here from data uh, integration, uh, ETL and ELT tools, data visualization, language clients, SQL clients, and so on. Uh, a really broad um, set of integrations. Um, there's a few webinars coming up. Hex, for instance, we're going to have a webinar, I think, on, I want to say, May 2nd, and also a Postgres-related webinar with Superbase. So do watch kind of our events page. Many of these integration uh, partners, uh, we kind of ho host webinars together to help folks understand how you use ClickHouse with one of these tools or technologies. All right, last but not least, cloud. We've been focused um, on building our cloud offering uh, in the past year. It went GA, as you heard, in December of 2022. And uh, since then, we've been working with customers to um, you know, make sure that they are successful in migrating their workload. I'm happy to say that number of customers for ClickHouse Cloud is in hundreds, and many of them have significant data sets, more than I honestly expected. It, no, but I, I think it just shows that you know, there's such a significant demand for the technology. It also has helped that we've run a private preview and then a public beta program throughout the year. We didn't just sort of like roll it out and say, hey, here's GA. We've really built this um, working with, with partners. And um, yeah, Pyotr has been part of uh, our platform for, uh, from I think from, from early access. And so we're really thankful to all of you in the community who have partnered with us um, you know, in a, on a very early product back in like May and July timeframe. So excited about where it is. Um, of course, we're going to continue to improve it. Uh, security and privacy is one area we're continuing to focus. Uh, programmability, API, kind of what you would expect, reducing that operational overhead with even more tools. Um, centralized user management is an example. Um, you know, from an ecosystem perspective, Kafka and other streaming sources are a big sort of um, point of integration. We've recently partnered with a number of, oops, technologies and vendors there. Um, 
again, I'm going through this kind of fast because it sort of like makes sense, right? If you're looking at a cloud offering, these are the kinds of things you'd be looking for, even above like the, the core technology, ease of use and additional tooling. Um, so anyway, um, I'll kind of pause here. Um, the last thing I will mention is that our GCP offering is coming. I forgot to put it on the slide. Oops. But yeah, we, we started in AWS, uh, and GCP is literally around the corner. There will be an announcement within weeks. So a few folks have asked me about it. If you haven't joined a cloud offering because you're in GCP, you know, just know that we already have closed our private preview program. We're not ac accepting any more uh, users into that program, but very soon a public beta will be available in GCP. Okay, so I'll pause there and I'm curious. Nobody raised their hand uh, during my talk. It's because I talk very fast, I know. And maybe Zach tried, did you? <laughs> okay, but now it's time for questions, so. First things first, um, for everyone who isn't aware, Tanya is literally the woman behind ClickHouse Cloud. Like she, she, no, but she, but she put it together. Like this is really her doing. So, um, super, super impressive. My question pertains to the query cache feature and how this differs from the kind of, I guess, not real cache that you get on ClickHouse Cloud already, where you know if you run the same query again and again, the node will warm up. You get some sort of caching effect almost. Sure, yeah, so there is a cache built into kind of the, the product itself. And this is really more at the file system level and uh, sort of like the, the, the um, data store level, right? The data store itself is smart enough to know which parts or even kind of locks are being read and stores them you know, for faster query processing internal to the product. So that's the cache. When we talk about our, our cloud or the product having an internal cache, that's really what it means. It uses internal oper uh, operating system constructs to basically speed up the queries. A query cache sits in front, right? A query cache is something you usually turn on uh, and it anticipates that um, many of your queries are, the, are kind of the same or very, very similar. And can uh, be, you know basically you can you can cache the whole result set as opposed to small sort of blocks uh, in say operating uh, system file cache. So that's the difference. Uh, the query cache is experimental; it's not production ready. Um, until now, folks have used the, the, there are a few com community uh, projects out there. CH Proxy, I think, is one of them. So there are sort of like solutions out there outside of ClickHouse itself that you can use for query caching. They work. We know that they work at scale, but we want to make that sort of a built-in part of the product. So that's the difference. Hopefully that helps. So I briefly saw it had GPT on your last slide there. Can you talk a little bit about that or maybe some ML tables or something like that? Okay, I'll talk about it briefly, but as I mentioned, yeah, if you have more detailed questions, I will defer to Kelly. So, so there's a few directions here. One is we will be looking at using uh, GPT directly, like to uh, basically expose certain type of, types of features in our product, right? We're not gonna be training our own models. We will likely just be using kind of off the shelf APIs. We've already had a prototype where, for instance, uh, you can enable from like just human like language, right? That you just ask a question and generates a, ClickHouse specific, you know, like syntax query. And that's pretty powerful. Like, look, I'm actually not like a SQL, I don't know, pro. Like, I'm not, not, I don't have a PhD in SQL. I can write a very basic SQL query for like a more complex search. I have to go and reference and kind of remind myself how to do it. So for me, this would be very helpful. And many, I think of us, it would be very helpful to have that kind of interface. There's other things that we can do in our product. For instance, our help, you know, it's great and all, but, but it's still it's very expansive, like, and search works only so well. So almost like having like automated, like suggestions of like help snippets based on what you're doing could be like another interesting use case. It's actually kind of tricky to figure out how to productize those. Like I, what keeps me up at night here is privacy, for instance. Like I want to make sure that we're not sending any private data to a third party. So like whatever we turn on has to be, you know, sort of like, um, you know, user consent and even then. So I don't know. We're going to have kind of an internal prototype first and then we'll figure out how to prioritize. That's one, one, one aspect of GPT. We'll, we'll certainly be looking at it for our own product development. The other aspect of it is that often uh, it's actually not enough to use like off the shelf models. Maybe you want to do some post training or maybe you want to actually like cache some of the embeddings generated by a model for kind of, uh, you know, additional 
um, vector search applications. And that's where ClickHouse as a data store is, is, there's a question there. Like, can you use ClickHouse as a vector search database or a database that has, you know, traditional sort of like aggregations plus vector search to power these kinds of use cases? And as it turns out on our internal testing is absolutely yes. So this is where I'm not gonna go too deep. I am not an expert in uh, embeddings or vector data store. Kelly can share a lot more and we're gonna have a reference architecture coming soon. All right. Hi again. Um, Hello. First of all, thanks for organizing the, tonight's meetup. Uh, it's nice to um, meet in such format uh, for like for the first time in three years. Um, I, it's been a while since I uh, looked at Cle and worked with ClickHouse, and it's uh, it's really cool to see the progress uh, the project has made so far. Um, and I have probably a dull question: Is is there someone tonight I could talk to about the hypothetical partnership with ClickHouse? Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> in, in in like slightly deep uh, with details and stuff. Yeah, so absolutely. Uh, let, let's talk. So you can talk to me. You can also talk to Mike Hayes. Um, uh, yeah. So both of us, um, generally speaking, uh, as I think was maybe asked or mentioned before, we're a data platform. Like we're not focused on building solutions to be clear. Like what Zach was showing is an internal application. We're not working on productizing uh, an amplitude competitor. So we are very interested in partnerships around solutions, use cases, right? We are primarily focused on building a great database and a great data platform. So absolutely, this is why we're so focused on uh, integrations because we really need to be part of a stack for certain use cases to make sense. And you know, so for some folks, they really don't want a stack. They want a solution. And this is where some interesting partnerships are emerging where we basically couple ClickHouse from a kind of a distribution perspective inside a, a kind of a product. Um, post hog folks are here, right? They're using ClickHouse embedded in their product and it's great. It's wonderful, right? So we're really excited and, and you know, it helps everybody. They've over the years done just a great job of fostering a community of users in their kind of in their space by, by blogging about ClickHouse, talking about ClickHouse as users. So very interested in that kind of partnership. We also have partners that, um, you know, are, are basically SaaS offerings that use ClickHouse as a database running on ClickHouse Cloud and we kind of work on joint distribution. There's, so there's lots of opportunities. Yeah, please talk to us. Uh, let me give you my microphone. So, uh, two-part question. First one: um, Do you surface? Do you uh, show the metadata behind the tables and the, the views that you guys have? And second is: Do you show the query, the cost itself? Yeah, so it's a good question. Like, do we show metadata on queries? Do we show costs? Um, ClickHouse has a concept of system tables. Um, so for every sort of query that's executed for every sort of aspect of how it's run or like, you know, uh, operated on different hardware, we record everything we can think of. Uh, these tables have every query you run with every sort of like um, metric that we could think of to record on it, uh, every sort of infrastructure metric around executing it. So the answer is most likely yes. Like the, these tables have a lot of data and that's what they're, they're there for. Um, we use these tables internally for certain types of heuristics. This is how, without analyzing today, we can do certain certain amount of heuristics. And those tables are available also for sort of click house observability. So absolutely, like that should be possible, but if there's a specific thing that's not there, we can add it or somebody can submit a PR to add it. Yeah, good point. Okay. Um, do I have the timeline right that you built the first cloud offering and launched it to GA in kind of a year and now GCP is about a few months? Yes, yes, we actually, yeah, we l l less than a year. So, 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 yes, we had a very aggressive timeline to, to cloud. And the reason uh, for that is the project is actually fairly mature. It's been open source since 2016. Uh, the company around it formed in um, the summer of 2021, I want to say. August, August of 2021, we took a few months actually to speak to our community and our users to understand what, what they would like to see from us. And the number one request was basically have a turnkey offering that's very easy to use and operate where you don't need a PhD in ClickHouse administration. Uh, and that's what we set out to build. Uh, we have a very, I would say seasoned team when it comes to building infrastructure uh, cloud offerings. And so we decided to do something maybe somewhat unconventional 
we set out a time-based sort of like set of milestones. And we basically, from the very beginning, said we're going to try to launch this thing in a year. As you might imagine, like it seemed daunting. When I joined in January 2022, and I was like, you're doing what? Like, and so, and they're like, Tanya, like, help us prioritize what we're going to ship in private preview in April. And I was like, that's a very short time. Like, I came from a fairly mature company, uh, Elastic. I mean, even in the early days, we didn't move that quickly. But, you know, we sat down with my colleagues in engineering. We basically said, okay, like, let's um, basically uh, create a backlog, right, based on user sort of uh, facing capabilities that we wanted to ship and just work backwards, strict, strict ordering and figure out what we could do by each milestone. And yeah, I mean, it ended up fitting pretty well. Uh, there were some areas we sort of underestimated. I'll give you an example. In private preview, we wanted to have backups. As it turned out, it was a much bigger effort. So like we descoped it. So we were very aggressive in like stack ranking uh, and then descoping if we needed to. And kind of asking ourselves, does the milestone still make sense? Is it still okay to have a private preview, for instance, without backups? So yeah, we, we got there. Very strict prioritization, uh, very fast growth in terms of team. When I joined, there was maybe, mm, I want to say, uh, like five data plane engineers. Like the cloud team was very small, right? I think there was maybe like two control plane engineers. And then over the course of the year, we like just hired a lot of people, onboarded, and just kept building. So yeah. That's, that's exactly what was the timeline. GCP, <laughs> we actually thought this, this was the crazy part. We, we didn't know how long it would take to copy paste basically from Amazon. So we thought we would have GCP by beta. As it turned out, it was just like crazily unrealistic. We, we did have a POC where we knew like what was technically possible and there were no blockers. But then once we realized how much work it is, we descoped it completely. Uh, and we said, we're only going to start working on it again once we had GA. So there were things that we absolutely had to like pause and say no to as we learned like what the scope was. Would you say your team tripled from five? So, 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 I mean, I probably shouldn't be saying all these numbers, but we're fairly like open company. So we are, yeah, I mean, the, the team, yeah, roughly tripled. Like I think we were like 40 people. We roughly tripled in a year. I mean, so. they can look it all up on LinkedIn, right? Okay, that's so, true. So it's that's public. True. Yeah, 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 roughly tripled in a year. It was, it was aggressive, right? It was aggressive. A period of growth and learning and how to you know work with each other and how to yeah how to as as a distributed team we are a distributed team mm -hmm. fully distributed yeah so come follow you. us on linkedin i'm sorry oh yes i'm sorry so we actually did describe this process in a blog uh, titled exactly as i think like the uh i think i pressed on the button um yeah, like ClickHouse Cloud from zero to one in under a year. I think that's really literally the name of the blog. So we go not only into like this timeline, but also the architecture that we've built and the technology decisions we made, um, many of which were actually aimed at how do you move faster. So we basically try, try to focus as much as possible on the most core capabilities. We partnered, for instance, like billing. We didn't bill our own billing. We partnered. Like So we basically had to figure out where do we partner? What do we not build? So, yeah. Other questions? Okay, well, thank you for your attention. Thank you for staying so late. Please come find us and hopefully we can chat more. <laughs>